What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios and today I'm going to break out of my comfort zone and I'm going to paint a super bright and vibrant Salamanders, Primera Space Marine. Spray black, no hey. chum, chum, chumaroo. How are we doing? Good, good, good. Yeah. Listen, I've had, I've had an idea. Um, I've realised that I paint things very bright, and I've noticed that you paint things not very bright. Possibly even grim dark, you could say. <laughs> yes. Yes, some would describe it as grim and dark. Um, do you fancy a bit of a challenge? Yeah, always up for a challenge. I'll, I challenge you to paint in my style and I'm going to have a go at doing yours. So you want me to paint super bright, super vibrant and really, really saturated? Oh dear. Yeah, that's, that's about the long and short of it. What do you think? Well, we can give it a try. Cool. Let's crack on then. So then, it's time to throw myself completely out of my comfort zone. Before I can start putting paint on a model, we need to have a look at the style that I'm going to need to be painting in. Let's have a look at some of Pickle's previous paint jobs. We're going to take a look at his Instagram page here and pick out just a handful of his previous posts. Now, as you can see, these are pretty different to my usual grim, dark and gritty style. He has painted up his salamanders in super vibrant and highly saturated colours, using the Citadel Warp Lightning Contrast and various highlight layers for that lovely bright green armour. Even the secondary colours he's used, like the yellow eye lenses, and even the metallics are all really quite bright and eye-catching. For the highlights, he has gone pretty volumetric, though he has thrown in a few of the good old Games Workshop Edge highlights for good measure. Now we'll be honest, this challenge probably will be quite difficult for me. Whilst I'm certainly capable of the techniques involved, actually to get a good colour and tonal balance, using colours that are this bright and this vibrant, this saturated, is definitely not what I'm used to. So for this challenge, I've kitbashed together a salamander's character. Obviously, being a salamander, I had to get that bald head and a melter pistol thrown into the mix. And I've also taken that ugly sword from the Judicia kit and fixed it. So starting from a priming of Vallejo Black Surface Primer, I'll do my usual Zenithal highlighting. And with some Liquitex white ink, I'll pick out all of those upper areas. This will help me pick out where I want all those highlights to sit and will give me some pre-shading just to give a little bit more visual interest to all those armour panels. To get that iconic bright Salamander's green armour, I'm going to have to take a page out of Pickle's book and use the Citadel Contrast Warp Lightning. I am, however, going to be applying this using my airbrush so that I can ensure a nice solid and even coat. See Pickle, this is what you need to paint vehicles with contrast paint. When applying contrast in this manner, it's important to not thin the paint down too much and to build it up in thin layers. Patience is absolutely crucial here and it's easy to pull the trigger back too much and cause it to build up too quickly, leaving the same patches and watermarks that you'd get by just slapping it on with a brush. Now whilst this is quite nicely saturated, it's nowhere near bright enough or vibrant enough for what we want. So to brighten this up a bit, I'll throw some Escorpina Green into the airbrush and I'll apply this mostly zenithal, but we'll also pick out certain areas that I want to stand out a bit more like the top of the knee pads and the top of the arms. Now I am going to add in a few edge highlights just to make those armour plates pop. Starting with pure Escorpina Green, I'll carefully pick out the edges of all of the armour panels. For the final highlights for the very corners of the shoulder pad or armour plates, I'll add a little bit of Vallejo's Dead White into that Escorpina Green. Now we need something to break up all that endless green, so I'm going to be adding some Abaddon Black 
to the backpack, the shoulder pads and to the gloves. I'll also give that melter pistol a nice black case into. To highlight these black areas, I am going to be pretty lazy and it wouldn't be a video of mine if it wasn't a bit of dry brushing. So out comes the Dawnstone dry paint and I'll use a nice soft dry brush to pick out all of those raised areas. I could have edge highlighted this, but as I say, I was feeling lazy. For all the metal areas, I'll be using the Vallejo Metal Color Magnesium. I've mentioned before that I absolutely love this metallic paint. It gives an absolutely brilliant coverage, even when laying over something like this green base coat. I'll also fall back to my trusty method for the leather areas and base these with Rhinox Hide. I would later highlight these with Steel Legion Drab, but for some reason, I decided not to film this bit. So now for the sword, I'm definitely gonna be stealing another one of Pickle's techniques. Last year, he uploaded a pretty awesome video on how to paint a pretty nice molten lava sword. Now I could tell you exactly how I've painted this, but instead I'm gonna suggest that once you finish watching this video, you follow the link that I'm gonna put down in the description below and check it out. So instead, I'll stick this into fast forward. So now that pretty epic looking sword is finished, let's add some more detail in. Another one of the things that jumped out to me from Pickle's painting is the use of a lovely rich and bright gold. For this, I'll use Retributor Armour over the Aquila on his chest and the hilt on the sword, then add in a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade, it will just make it look a little bit more burnished and give it a bit more definition. Now, I chose a helmetless head, but I'm going to be honest here, I've never actually tried to paint up the skin of a salamander before. As I am a bit of a lore nerd, I do know that generally they have an almost pitch black skin tone due to the conditions that they live in. So to pull this off, I'm going to use a base coat of Rhinox Hide and then I'll give it a couple of thin wash layers with Nuln Oil. This will give it those deep black tones, but also some quite nice brown highlights. Obviously I can't leave the shoulder pads blank, so rather than attempting to freehand the Salamander's chapter logo, I'm going to again cheat a little bit and I'm going to paint some flames. Using a base of corn red, I'll start to draw in the rough shapes of the flames, and then I'll start building up those colours, working through Mephiston Red and Fire Dragon Bright. I'll leave a little bit of the previous layer showing each time, until it gets to the point of adding in the nice bright yellows to form the real centre of these flames. For this, I'll use a layer of Avalon Sunset and then finished off with the super bright Vallejo Moon Yellow. I also need to at least make it look like he's fired that melter pistol before. So to add a little bit of heat bloom to it, I'll start off with a very small layer of Drakenhof Nightshade added to the very end of the barrel. Once this is dried, I'll then add a layer of Drookie Violet, extend a little bit further down the barrel and then finally some Seraphim Sepia just to finish that look off. Now a salamander really needs a nice lava base too. So I've built up this base using cork sheeting and then some UV resin to make the lava with a couple of balls of green stuff added just to make some bubbles. Having primed it in black, I'll grab out the Liquitex ink again and very carefully I'm gonna apply a few thin layers just to brighten it up a bit so it's more of a gray tone than a black. Using a dry brush of Dawnstone, I can also pick out all those textures and make it look a little bit more rock-like. I'll mainly focus on the edges of the outcrop just to really make them pop. Grabbing the airbrush out again, it's time to paint some lava. Starting off with the Vallejo Bloody Red, I'll give all of the lava areas a good coat and also make sure that I let it bleed over the rocky areas just to give a little bit of an OSL effect. I'll then start to add in some Vallejo Moon Yellow to make a nice orange colour and apply it towards the outside of the base. I'm going to leave the edges red here. This is to simulate the outer areas being cooler and the real hotter areas of the lava being in the middle of the flow. Adding more and more yellow into the mix, I'll make these layers smaller and smaller 
until I get to a pure moon yellow. And I'll apply this very sparingly just to the couple of areas that I really want to pop. Lastly, I obviously need to make sure that the base room gets the proper treatment and a nice layer of a bad and black will cover up any of the overshooting from the airbrushing or from the dry brushing. Now having added this guy to the base, I wasn't really happy with how it came out. Whilst I did push the colours and the highlights way further than I ever would in my normal painting, I just didn't really feel like it was enough. So I brought him back to the painting desk and got out a part of Citadel Moot Green, a super bright and super vibrant lime green. Thinning this down quite a lot, I then proceeded to very carefully glaze this onto certain areas where I wanted a really bright highlight. Areas like the shoulder pads, the chest and the upper parts of his legs where I thought the light would really be catching. And with that, I think I'm all done. I was definitely well out of my comfort zone on this painting project, but that's why I love challenges like this. This challenge pushed me to do something that I definitely wouldn't do in my normal painting, but will only serve to make me a better painter in the long run. I very much had to fight against myself on occasions while painting this guy up. Adding such bright highlights felt very unnatural for me. And to be honest, there were many occasions that I just wanted to crack out the streaking grime or pop a little bit of battle damage on him. I'll be honest, keeping the streaking grime and the weathering pigments on the shelf was probably the hardest bit of this. If you've enjoyed this video and you've yet to see Pickle's attempt at a grimdark space marine, then there is a link down in the description below and I highly recommend that you go check it out. For someone who hasn't painted in the grimdark style before and doesn't have many of the products that I would use painting in that style, he's actually done a superb job of it. So go and show Pickle some love. If you're not subscribed to him, then hit that big red subscribe button on his channel. He does some brilliant tutorials every Saturday morning and live streams every Wednesday and every other Sunday. So now on a slightly more serious note, this challenge has come at a very interesting time. The day that Pickle messaged me with his idea for this, I had actually made the decision to push this channel a little bit more into the grimdark route. It seems recently that my grimdark videos have been the ones that you guys have been more receptive to, and to be honest, they're a lot more fun for me to film as well. I will continue to make other content, I don't want to be completely pigeonholed, and I welcome suggestions for anything that you may want to see, but expect a lot more grit, dirt and grime in the coming videos. If you've enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you won't miss my future uploads. I am at the time of recording this super close to hitting that thousand subscriber mark. This is a milestone, which not only means a lot to me, but to be honest, absolutely boggles me that there are a thousand of you out there that want to watch my videos. So thanks again for watching guys. And as always, if all else fails, spray it black and start again.